Splinter Cell is back. Ubisoft Toronto has begun work on a remake of Sam Fisher's most classic operations, and with the series return on the horizon, it's the perfect time to look back at the game that started it all. What the hell? I'm going to ask you some questions. When I think you're lying, I'll do this. I... Who do you work for? Splinter Cell launched back in 2002, a time when Ubisoft was best known as the company that made Rayman, a bright and colorful platformer. Splinter Cell was not that. It was a dark and serious stealth action game that favored slow, methodical movements over frantic action. And no one was quite sure how fans would react. Maybe it's better if I didn't see anything. To find out more about the development of that first game and the lasting effects it had, we spoke to some of the folks that helped launch the original Splinter Cell and some that are helping to bring it back. Sam Fisher. I can't believe you beat me here. I like to be early. The very first time we really understood that we had a hit in our hands is, I guess, when we were talking to Microsoft. Like, we had that feeling, that gut feeling, but it wasn't validated by anything, and we never had a hit before at Ubisoft, like, not a big one like that. When Microsoft came to us and looked at it, they knew also something was up, and they were considering it for their E3 showcase at the time for showing up the Xbox. And it was super scary for us because we're like, how are people going to react? We don't know. Is it very dark? Is it going to come through nicely on the screen? Is it going to show off its colors? The feedback we received uh, from E3 was so incredible. So it just gave us, uh, gave us a huge push to, uh, to get things done and get this game to the level of the expectations. Probably for E3 and for our competitors and for... Um, you know, for, for players at large, it probably came out of nowhere. There was this whole, whoa, who, who is Ubisoft? It was a transformation of what Ubisoft could do and how they were regarded. That was very special because at that time uh, at Ubisoft Montreal, um, we were producing games, but we were not in a, in a triple A mi mindset at that time. And this game became somehow a, a great inspiration from the teens. And from that moment, uh, when Splitter Cell did release with uh, a very cool feedback and, and nice reviews and, and nice popularity as well, this, this has been an incredible trigger for the whole studio to reach for this level of achievement for other games. But what exactly was it that drew in audiences at that E3? What did Splinter Cell do that set it apart from the crowd? The answer? as it turns out, was pretty black and white. Light, shadow. It's instantly relatable and instantly something that you know how to play with. People paid attention because they had never seen such amazing visuals at first. That whole shadow and light was beautiful and it was giving a dimension that they had never played with. And it had to do with the, the Xbox and the ability of the Xbox to render these dynamic lights with dynamic shadows and dynamic real-time shadows. and. Um, and it was really the ambition of the team uh, early on to, to push the, the, the visual fidelity of the game as, as far as we could. The way art and level design had to work together um, to deal with you know, how dynamic lights would affect the gameplay as well as the visuals was probably one of the biggest challenges of development. It was one of those times where a game came out and just really had a brilliant presentation that was so critical for the actual design itself. So you can only imagine how exciting that would have been for the team. The first time we saw the, you know, the fish tanks that you could, you know, you could shoot the fish tanks and the water would lower down with the, the stream and down to the level of the bullet hole and then it would stop. And, you know, you could keep shooting it and lowering it. Little tweaks like that, little, little surprises that, that, you know, people just found the time and the energy to put in to add the polish and the, and the care to the game. Uh, that was great. I remember thinking to myself, you know, I was super blown away by the, the tech advances that were part of that game, the stencil shadows and the, the moving cloth and, you know, uh, the thermal goggles and all of the stuff. And I just remember thinking to myself, you know, um, how that was even possible at the time. Visually, it was amazing. You know, the, the light effects were remarkable ahead of anything else that was being done at the time. But it was even more than that. The use and exploitation of light and shadow set Splinter Cell apart from its competitors, but it would take more than that to deliver on the development team's promise. A promise they felt so strongly about, they put it right on the box art. Stealth action redefined was 
born out of the fact that this was it was this was a challenge to the god of tactical espionage action, which was uh, Metal Gear Solid. It, it was really the mission that Splint Cell set out for itself. It was okay if we're going to take espionage, if we're going to take stealth action, how are we going to position that in a way that fits the Tom Clancy brand values as well? We had Rainbow Six, Red Storm was working on Ghost Recon. Those were obvious Tom Clancy games, but Splinter Cell came from Montreal and Montreal wasn't working on Tom Clancy at the time. And when we looked at it, we looked at the fantasy, we looked at um, the realism and the techno thriller aspect of it. We figured that would perfectly fit under Tom Clancy. Back then, there was a lot of you know uh, a lot of games that were very kind of heavy on just shoot, kill, be done. That's how you get through these situations. Um, Splinter Cell made you slow down. It made you think. It made you kind of try to understand the threats that were ahead of you, and it layered all of those features together. Um, and it rewarded players for thinking differently, for, for being a bit more kind of patient with, you know, the, the way that they chose to, to solve those situations. The idea of being the one who can make the difference, who can go into those places that no one's supposed to be able to go to and do what no one's supposed to be able to do, that's an incredibly powerful fantasy and it's a lot of fun to be that person. We used an actor that was a recognized person that was new at the time. Anybody have a line back to third echelon? I'm here, Fisher. What the hell's going on? Nicolas just declared war on the US. What? Now it's something that a lot of people do, a lot of game publishers. It's kind of normal, but at the time it wasn't. And we really looked at it like, first it was a Clancy brand, so we looked at it like something bigger than just a video game, marketed it that way, and created a persona. Sam's a great character. Um, he's smart, he's funny, he's fast, he does what he can do um, with a minimum of waste. He's uh, high speed, low drag, and he's just an incredibly fun character to play. While Sam is unequivocally the star of the Splinter Cell franchise, let's be honest, he'd get nowhere without his signature night vision goggles. Not only are they an essential tool in Sam's arsenal, they're the symbol of the entire franchise. Those three green dots and that iconic sound, yep, that sound is enough to know exactly what game you're dealing with. The sound came in very late, and I think that uh, we didn't realize how important and valuable it was until someone said, you know, we really got to have a much more iconic sound in here somewhere. And it had this kind of very military uh, um, feel to it. We were trying to create something that felt very realistic and modern and you know just because of the speed at which technology moves it kind of became its own thing in 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 time and it adhered to sort of the genuineness of it and and kind of stuck 19 years ago splinter cell put ubisoft on the map and changed the landscape for stealth action games across the industry now thanks to the upcoming remake, a brand new generation can experience the best Splinter Cell has to offer. For future updates on the Splinter Cell remake, follow this channel and visit us at news.ubisoft.com. Thank you.